Welcome to the video help with physics problems for Physics 1B. This video covers homework set 1, part 2, which is everything under the heading Gauss's Law. For 1221 students, this is questions 5 to 9. For 1231 students, this is questions 8 to 14. Problem 5 for 1221 or 8 for 1231. In this problem, we have an electric field. And we have a surface, so this is drawn side on, here's our surface, A, such that the normal to the surface, so here's the normal to the surface, makes an angle theta with the electric field. So that angle in there is theta. And we're asked to calculate phi E, the electric flux, through this surface. Well, phi E is equal to the integral of E dot dA. Now, to get rid of this dot product, we can include a cos theta. So we can write this as E cos theta dA. So this is E, the electric field's uniform, so we can pull it out the front. Cos theta is a constant, and then we're integrating. We're doing the surface integral over dA. When we do that, we just get the surface area. So this is equal to E A cos theta. And that's the answer to this problem. Problem 6. For 1, 2, 2, 1, or 9 for 1, 2, 3, 1. In this question, we're told that a surface encloses an electric dipole. So for an electric dipole, we've got a charge plus Q and a charge minus Q, and this is enclosed by some surface. And we're asked, what does this say about phi E? Well, we know that phi E is equal to the enclosed charge over epsilon naught. So in this case, the enclosed charge is plus Q minus Q, which is zero. So that's zero. So it tells us that the flux through this surface is zero. So this is not saying that E is zero everywhere. We're just saying over the surface the flux is zero. So E dot dA will be equal to zero. If we add up all the increments of E dot dA over the surface, they will add to zero, but at each point on the surface, E is not necessarily zero. Problem 7 for 1, 2, 2, 1, or 10 for 1, 2, 3, 1. In this problem, we have a point charge with a charge of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs in the middle of a cube. And we're told that the length of the cube is 0 0.50 meters. And so we have the electric flux is equal to the enclosed charge over epsilon naught. So in this case, the charge enclosed by this surface is given by 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Epsilon naught is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulombs squared per newton meter squared and so solving this on the calculator we end up with 1.1 times 10 to the 5 and our units will be newton meters squared per coulomb. Note that this is actually independent of the surface area. If we were to try and work out the electric field, then we would need to consider the surface area. But to just get the electric flux, all we need to do is consider the enclosed charge. Problem 8 for 1, 2, 2, 1, or 11 for 1, 2, 3, 1. So in this problem, we have a spherical balloon with a charge spread uniformly over its surface. In part A, we're asked what's the electric field inside the balloon. So let's draw our surface inside the balloon. Well the flux through this surface is equal to the enclosed charge over epsilon naught and inside this surface there is no enclosed charge so this is equal to zero. So this tells us that E dot dA is equal to zero. And now the surface area of this charge is clearly not zero. So as this is not zero the electric field must be zero. So the electric field is equal to zero inside the balloon. Okay, now in part B, 
we're asked outside the balloon as the balloon is blown up. So let's take a big surface. Here's our outside surface and this balloon's going to be be blown up. So it's going to be expanding within this surface. So our enclosed charge, phi E is equal to the enclosed charge, is just the charge on the surface. over epsilon naught. Now this isn't going to change as long as the balloon doesn't go outside our surface. So as long as we don't blow up our balloon beyond this point, the enclosed charge will not change. So let's let this equal Q over epsilon naught. We'll assume that there's Q spread over the surface of the balloon. Then we have E dot dA is equal to Q over epsilon naught. And now we're assuming that we're taking a spherical surface like this. So the surface elements are perpendicular to the surface and the electric field lines also come out perpendicular to the surface of the balloon. So you can see that these are parallel. This is dA, the direction of dA, and this is E. And at each point these are parallel. So when we take the dot product, all we have to do is multiply them together. So this is equal to E dA, getting rid of our dot product. Now we're assuming that the electric field is uniform, so because the charge is spread uniformly, that would generate a uniform electric field. So we have E times the integral of dA. Now this is the integral over the surface, so this is just equal to EA. So what we end up with is E is equal to Q over epsilon naught A where A is the surface area of whatever surface we choose. And this isn't going to change as the balloon's blown up as long as the balloon stays within our surface. As soon as the balloon comes outside our surface, we're back to case A. Problem 9 for 1, 2, 2, 1 or 12 for 1, 2, 3, 1. In this problem, we have two concentric cylinders. Here's our first cylinder with radius A and then around that, we have a second cylinder with radius B. These have opposite charges distributed along them. So the charge density at A is lambda, the charge density at B is minus lambda. In part A, we're asked to find the electric field at R is less than A and also R is greater than B. So let's start by drawing a little cylinder with a radius R less than A. And length L. Okay, so for this little cylinder here, the enclosed charge is equal to zero because there's no enclosed charges in there. So we have E dot dA is equal to zero over epsilon naught. Doesn't matter because it's zero. And the surface area for this is not zero. So all the dA is not zero. So that tells us that the electric field must be zero. So the electric field for R is less than A is zero. Now let's consider a cylinder with R is greater than B, like this. Well then, the Q enclosed, this is length L, is equal to lambda L minus lambda L. So these will cancel each other out and we'll have zero. So back to this same case, because this clearly has some surface area, so the dA isn't zero everywhere, so E must be zero. Now, in part B, we're asked, well, what happens then between the cylinders? So let's draw our cylindrical surface between these cylinders. The enclosed charge in this case, this cylinder once again has length L, is going to be lambda L because we've got the enclosed charge on A but no enclosed charge from B. Now what we need to do is consider the different surfaces on the cylinder. The electric field lines are going to be perpendicular to the charged surface, so they're going to be in this direction. And the dA, the direction of that, is perpendicular to the surface. So along this piece of the cylinder with the rectangular cross section, we've got that these two are parallel. At the circular ends of the cylinder are electric field lines and are the direction we draw A are perpendicular. So along these circular surfaces, E dot dA will be zero. 
Okay, so we've got E dot DA is equal to lambda L over epsilon naught. And E dot DA we can break into two sections. The circular ends E dot DA is going to be zero, so we'll ignore those. So all we need to do is worry about the area with the rectangular cross section. So for that area, the electric field is spread evenly over it. So we have E times the integral dA is equal to lambda L over epsilon naught. And the surface area of that surface is given by 2 pi R L, the circumference of the circle times L, that's lambda L over epsilon naught. So what we can do now is solve this for E. So our electric field is equal to lambda over 2 pi r epsilon naught. And that's what we were asked to show. Problem 13, which is a 1, 2, 3, 1 only problem. Okay, in this problem we have charge spread evenly through an infinitely long cylinder. So here's our cylinder with radius r. And we're asked to find the electric field at a distance little r from the axis of the cylinder. So let's draw ourselves another little cylinder. Here we go, it's got length L and it's got radius little r. And we're asked to find the electric field along here. Well, we know that the electric field lines are going to radiate outwards from this surface like this. And a, the direction that an increment of surface area has is perpendicular to the surface. So we can draw these in this direction. Okay, so these are the directions of A and these are the directions of E. Okay, so what we know is that Q enclosed over epsilon naught is equal to the integral over the surface of E dot dA. So inside this surface, RQ enclosed is equal to, well, the density, the charge density, times the volume of this cylinder. So the volume is given by pi r squared L. So we've got rho pi r squared L over epsilon naught is equal to. Now, we can ignore the circular ends of the cylinder because at these points, the dot product is zero. E and A are perpendicular to each other, hence zero. So we can also see that the electric field is going to be uniform as the charge is uniformly distributed. And so we can do E times the surface integral dA. And when we add up all the little increments of surface area over this cylinder, the rectangular cross-section part of this cylinder, we end up with 2 pi R L is the surface area and then we've still got our E. So now we can rearrange this to get our electric field E. We can see the pi's will cancel, one of these R's will cancel, our L will cancel and we end up with E is equal to rho R over 2 epsilon naught and that is what we were asked to show. Okay, problem 14 this is for one, two, three, one only. In this problem, we have a surface with a uniform charge density of sigma. And we've got a little mass here making an angle theta with the surface. And it's got a mass m, so we've got a weight force acting downwards. This is a positive charge and this is a positive surface, so we have an electrostatic repulsion, let's call it Fe, out this way, and we've also got a tension force in the silk thread. We're asked to calculate sigma for this case, the surface charge density. What we'll need to do is we'll need to consider the forces. These forces are all in equilibrium, so we can draw them head to tail like this. Here's T, here's Mg, and here's Fe. This is 90 degrees and this angle up here is the theta. So we can see that tan theta is equal to the electrostatic repulsion over mg. Okay, so we know what theta is, we know m, 
we know what A is. So let's look at this electrostatic force. Fe is given by Eq. We've got Q, so now we need to consider the electric field being generated by this surface. To do that, let's use Gauss's law. Let's draw a cylinder. Doesn't actually matter which shape we choose. We could choose a square prism if we wanted or a rectangular prism. Doesn't matter. Okay, now the electric field lines are coming off the surface like this and our surface elements, that's the direction of A there, this is E. You can see that along this edge of the prism, these are perpendicular so we don't need to consider them, but along these circular ends, these are parallel. So these, the E dot DA will contribute from these two ends here. So what we have is Q enclosed over epsilon naught is equal to E dot dA from Gauss's law. Now the enclosed charge is given by the surface density times the surface area, which is the pi r squared, where r is the radius of the cylinder we're considering. That's over epsilon naught. Now the electric field, because this is a uniform charge density, is uniform, so we can pull the electric field out the front. And then we've got just the integral of dA. And we said the only dA's which are contributing to this integral are the two end ones. So this is equal to E times 2 pi r squared. There's the 2 because there's the two circles, each with an area pi r squared. Okay, so this pi r squared will cancel that pi r squared. And we end up with E is equal to sigma over 2 epsilon naught. And we can now substitute this in here. So we've got our electric electrostatic force is given by sigma q over 2 epsilon naught. Okay, now theta we're told is equal to 30 degrees and tan theta, looking at our little triangle here, 30, that's 1, that's 2, that's root 3, tan theta is 1 on root 3. Okay, so we've got 1 on root 3 is equal to Fe, which is sigma q over 2 epsilon naught times mg. And now what we're asked to find is sigma, so we can rearrange this. Sigma is equal to 2 epsilon naught mg over root 3q. All we need to do now is substitute in 2 times 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 times m. Now we're told that the mass is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 grams. So that's 10 to the minus 6 kilograms. So we're putting 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 times the 9.8 over the root 3. And then Q is given by 2.0 times 10 to the minus 8 coulombs. So entering that onto your calculator, you end up with 5.0 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs per meter squared. And so that is our answer.